This is Recorder. It's the first and main unit in an expandable wall-mounted synth system. I think of it as frame digital music art, something that can record sound, store it like tapes, and also work as a kind of music guestbook. It's designed to feel more like a retro machine than a modern device, with physical buttons, clicky controls, and immediate feedback. This recorder is part of a larger project I call Frame Music. Instead of desktop gear, the idea is to build frame units, each one with a specific function, a physical interface, and a clear visual identity. Each frame is meant to be visually complete on its own, something you'd still want on the wall, even when it's idle. The system is expandable, and I'll be making more units available over time designed to work together on the wall. The frame holds two pocket operators of your choice. In this setup, I've installed a rhythm and a robot mounted directly in the frame. They can be chained together via the patch bay and routed straight into the tape recorder. From there, you can record, playback and cycle through recordings directly on the frame. When a recording is playing or being captured, the tape on screen is animated, the reels spin, and the interface clearly shows the current state. It can store up to 99 recordings, and bad takes can be erased with a long press of the rec button. This is a DIY project, and everything you see in this build is shared. All files are available on MakerWorld, including 3MF and STL files documentation in form of wiring diagrams, parts list, build instructions, and the full sketch. Be sure to check out my other projects, like the popular arcade cabinet. I've included eight different color themes in the project. The idea is that you can choose any filament colors for the build, and then match the interface to that look by selecting one of the preset themes. The themes are selected in the sketch file and are designed to be easy to modify if you want to create your own. Each theme also includes a set of 10 tapes, each with its own cool label. Recorder also has a mode button. When you switch modes, the recorder turns into a small breakout style arcade game. I just could not resist adding a small game to the build. The buttons are reused as game controls, and the visuals adapt to the active color theme. Before we continue, a quick word from PCBWay. Right now, they are running their Christmas and New Year campaign, with discounts running from November 28th through December 30th. The campaign includes coupons as well as discounts on services like PCB fabrication, PCB assembly and 3D printing, including materials like UTR 8100 and Somos Lido. I've put a direct link to the campaign in the description below. It's a good time to check it out. One way recorder can be used is as a sound or music guestbook. Instead of writing something down, people can walk up, record a short sound and move on. Because everything is immediate and physical, a little help is usually enough for people who don't normally make music to get started. The entire frame is 3D printed. For this build, I wanted it to look finished straight off the print bed, without sanding or painting. The graphics and text are done using multicolor printing, but if you prefer traditional decals, I've also made decal sheets available as an alternative. On the right side of the frame, there's a small compartment for patch cables, so everything needed to use it stays with the frame. The whole unit runs on a rechargeable LiPo battery, so it doesn't need to be permanently plugged in, and it uses a Teensy 4.1 for brains. Let's take a look at how you could build a recorder of your own. Start by going through the documentation to get a clear understanding of how everything fits together. 
it'll help you plan ahead. I start with the buttons, using a strip board to line up and mount all six of them. It also works as a simple mounting solution for fixing the buttons to the frame. I use a 6-pin female DuPont connector to connect the buttons to the teensy, and all ground wires are twisted and soldered together. When starting the assembly, you need to have an assortment of self-tapping screws on hand, along with your tools, and a few plastic cable ties to keep everything neat. Once the front panel is inserted into the frame, it's locked in place. Because of that, I do most of the assembly before to keep everything easy to access. I'd recommend using a gel type super glue when gluing the frame together. It helps avoid the kind of glue mess you can see here. The pocket operators themselves are mono instruments but the right channel is used for communication so the units can sync and work together. I prepare the small amplifier and solder the speaker, power and input wires to it. I then mount it to the frame. Take a small piece of strip board and use it as a central ground point, since there are too many wires to connect directly to the ground pins on the TNC. The small microphone is mounted to the inside of the frame using double-sided tape. The main power rail runs at 5 volts but the TNC provides a 3.3 volt output, which is exactly what the microphone needs.
power booster steps the battery's 3.7 volts up to 5 volts and also handles charging through the USB port on the bottom of the frame. The TNC, the NeoPixel stick and the amplifier are all connected to the main power rail through the terminal blocks. The screen connects through the pins that run through both the TNC and the audio shield. It's detailed work, but as long as you stay patient, it should go together without issues. Next, it's time to connect the TRS jacks to the audio shield's input and output. If you like my projects, head over to Patreon. As a member, you will get access to exclusive builds, chats, support and in-depth videos. I hope you liked the project. Thanks for watching.